Hi everyone, my name is Jack Roberts and I'm going to start by introducing you to Joe, who you see on the slide behind me. So, um, as a child, Joe was diagnosed with the incredibly rare eye disease, choroideremia. And what this meant is that as he grew up, he had to watch his eyesight get worse and worse. And all doctors could do was tell him, they could do nothing except tell him that one day he'd wake up and his world would look like this. And so you can imagine the extreme anxiety caused watching the world disappear in front of your eyes, knowing that one day it'll be gone forever. And so this is an example of a, a very rare disease, but sight loss related issues are more common than you might think and currently affect 2 million people in the UK. And crucially, 1 million of these are considered to be preventable. And the UK's largest charities standing in the, the way of, of sight loss are Fight for Sight, and they currently have £8 million invested in active eyesight-related research. And what I've been doing with them over the past six weeks is to answer the question of which research areas they should focus on, what their research portfolio has looked like in the past, what it looks like now, and how it should develop in the future. But this is a difficult question, because in the past 10 years or so, Fight for Sight have funded around 350 grants, these grants have generated about 1,400 publications, and these publications have generated about 25,000 citations. So already here, you can kind of see how quickly the, the scale of this problem is developing. And if 25,000 is not a big enough number for you to, to convince you, we can look at the, the wider eyesight uh, field. And in, the, in this field, there's been roughly 400,000 publications in the past 10 years. So to analyze all of this research, you must think that Fight for Sight have a, a huge team of people to stay up to date with everything. But in reality, Fight for Sight are quite a, a small charity, and so they only have a team of four people, a research team of four people. And not even that, but these people are busy with plenty of other tasks, like dealing with grant applications and so on. So in reality, maybe they have half a person to do this task. And so what I've done is to use a machine learning natural language processing algorithm which takes each of the 400,000 abstracts of which you see one example here. First thing it does is remove any words that are uninformative, like common words such as the and where, which don't convey any meaning, or extremely rare words. And then with this new edited abstract, it identifies groups of words which commonly appear together. And with these groups of words, it can be used to define research topics. And so this word cloud represents a topic to do with glaucoma, which is a common eye disease. And if we had any medical doctors in the audience, maybe there are, you would notice many terms on this slide, such as intraocular pressure, which are frequently uh, are commonly, common terms related to glaucoma. So now, now we have these topics, we can start to, to visualize the whole research field. So, this, this image, uh, the, the colors show the different topics in eye research, and the positions of the topics show how, how they relate together. Uh, so this is for the whole, the whole field, and then what we can do is add on Fight for Sight direct, uh, publications that are directly related to Fight for Sight. So already here, you can see that Fight for Sight are active across the whole field, but there are areas where they are more active and areas where they are less active. For example, on the, on the left here, you have an area where they are very active relating to genes and, and gene mutations, which is the kind of grassroots research which they really focus on. And then on the right, we have an area where they are, are less active relating to infectious diseases of the eye. And so what this does is for the, for the first time, it gives them a real quantitative understanding of how their research has looked in the past, the present, and how they can then guide their priorities for the future, and most importantly, it's feasible for them to do this with the small team that they have. And hopefully this will let them uncover more stories like, like Joe's, because a few years ago, he was part of a, a new clinical trial of a, a groundbreaking gene therapy, which has now cured him of his choroideremia, so he no longer has to face the prospect of going blind, and crucially, this this uh, gene therapy would not come about were it not for research funded by Fight for Sight. Thank you.